This video is going to look at the principle of wave superposition. So the principle of superposition says that multiple events can occur at the same time. So let's look at just waves and what happens. I'm going to start by looking at not a sine wave, but a square wave, because it's kind of easier to see what's going on. And the square wave is like a sine wave. It has a crest and it has a trough, and the crest and trough can repeat over time, just like a sine wave would do. It also has a wavelength, just like a sine wave, just from the start of the crest to the start of the next crest, or you could do the start of the trough to the start of the next trough, same way you would with sine waves. All right, now let's look at this as a function of time, what happens. I've got a red wave on top and a green square wave on the bottom. And if I look at the amplitude, that's how big or how high it is from the axis, which is yellow, in any instant in time, I can add up these amplitudes. So the first one goes up two blocks, and the green is also going to go up two blocks. So at that instant in time, the amplitude is going to be four blocks high. So what I'm going to hear, if it was sound, is I would hear something that's four times louder. If it was light, four, maybe four times brighter. And then this re pattern repeats as a function of time. And you can see right next to the squares where it was too high, it's zero, because it's on the axis. So zero plus zero is zero, and that's why the purple wave on the bottom is all the way on the yellow axis. Let's look at a few others and see if you can figure out what's going on. So here's the square wave. The question is, what is the wave on the bottom going to look like? Okay, so the red wave is two squares high. The green at an instant of time is zero. So they're going to add up two plus zero is going to give you two. And in fact, that two plus zero is going to repeat over and over and over. So two plus zero is two. And for the next part, you can see where it's going to be 0 plus 2, and that's going to give me 2 again. So this gives me a constant output of just 2 with my square wave. Let's try another one. How about this time? What's the output going to be? I'll pause. All right, hopefully you figured this out. The red is too high. The blue is two blocks low at each instant in time. So if I go too high and too low, well, they add up to zero. So in this case, if it was light, I wouldn't see this color. If it was sound, I wouldn't hear this frequency. So two blocks high, two blocks low, and when I add the two amplitudes together that same instant in time, I'm going to get zero. How about these two? I'll pause. Hopefully now you're kind of catching on fast. I can see that I have one block for the red for the amplitude, and the blue has a block of one for the amplitude. One plus one is two. And then next to them I have negative one and negative one. And so that would be negative two. And so you can see how the wave is more dramatic this time with doubling the amplitudes. All right, so let's look at one more principle about this, or one more application of it. So just as a reminder, this is the wavelength, and this, that's a phase shift. So that's actually pi radians of a phase shift, which is going to be a 180 degree phase shift. And notice the purple line. It's zero. So in the previous example, I had the wavelengths match up, and that just doubled. It became kind of a bright spot. You could hear that. But this time with this 180 degree phase shift of this color, this frequency, or, or this sound frequency, however you want to look at the wave, I don't hear anything, and I wouldn't see anything. So I can actually, just by shifting the phase 180 degrees, or half a wavelength, I can make that color disappear. And that's an important concept that we want to build on. Whenever you're losing the frequency, be it the color of the light or the sound, that's because there's a 180 degree phase shift at that location.